everyone. It looks like it's 930 and we have attendees trickling in. So we'll start today's PSRC's Regional Priority Ranking Training. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Jean Kim. I am the Senior Planner with Puget Sound Regional Council. I'm joined here today by Erin Hogan, Associate Planner with PSRC, and Matthew Kramer, Hi, Erin. <laughs> and Matthew Kramer with Washington State Department of Transportation. Today, we'll provide you with two presentations. Uh, first, Matthew will present the statewide consolidated grant program. And on um, the following presentation, Erin and I will cover the PSRC region specific priority ranking process, which is part of the whole statewide consolidated grant process. Um, all presentation materials and the recording of this training um, will be posted on the PSRC website pretty soon. Uh, because we have a limited time with you today, we will answer the questions after the presentations and please use the Q&A uh, function on the Zoom toolbar where you can click the button um, to type your questions. And the closed caption um, function is also available for today's webinar. Um, without any further ado, um, I want to welcome Matthew Kramer, Washington State Department of Transportation, Community Transportation Planner. Um, Matthew, please take it away. Great. Thank you, Jean. Good morning, everybody. My name is Matthew Kramer. I'm the Community Transportation Planner for the Washington State Department of Transportation. I'm specifically the Community Transportation Planner for uh, Central Puget Sound, um, which includes uh, King County and Pierce County. Uh, I'm also joined by my colleague, Katie Stan Stan Stanford, who is the Community Transportation Planner for Snohomish County. So um, today, I'm um, the WashDOT, uh, WashDOT you know, manages the Consolidated Grant Program, specifically the Public Transportation Division that I belong to. So I'm just going to be um, spending the next uh, 10 minutes or so giving the, the general um, overview, and then there'll be time for Q&A at the, at the end of um, both presentations. So um, with that, let me... So here's our general um, general timeline here. The um, solicitation went, um, this cycle went live as of June 18th. Um, the, uh, the next crucial deadline is September 17th. So all applications need to be received by um, 3 p.m. at that time. Those are gonna, all application materials are submitted through our grants management system, which I will um, touch on. Um, later in this uh, presentation. Um, then from there, it goes to WashDOT and we do our um, initial review and work with our applicants um, between September and October um, with those final application, um, revised applications coming in um, November uh, 19th. Um, and then Gene will be going into greater depth here, but then um, the regional ranking process occurs where you'll every single um, project will be awarded a letter grade. And then um, from there, um, we come back to WashDOT and we convene a, um, a panel of, of external reviewers. So we have um, third party consultants that also, so WashDOT isn't conducting the review itself. That's up to our um, panel of, of experts. So they'll um, conduct their own review. And then we do a composite score of the two, um, of the letter grade that, came, that will be coming from um, our MPO, our TPO partners, um, PSRC in this case, and then that composite score gets added to the um, external evaluators. And then um, those that receive funding um, will receive their letters uh, May um, of 2025 with the biennium starting July um, 1st of 2025. Um, so that's our general timeline. Um, so what is, so the consolidated grant program, the reason why it's called the consolidated grant program is it consolidates several um, funding sources, including state and federal funding. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of our for, of our applicants like yourselves, and um, then the state just assigns the color of the money that is specifically applicable to whatever that project type happens to be. So these are the various project types that are being or funding types that are being consolidated. So rural mobility um, on this for the state side um, and state special needs, as well as several different funding sources, uh, 5310, um, 5311 for rural services. Um, there's 5304 for planning projects, so just the full cross section. But just the main, the main thing you need to keep in mind is there; these are both state and federal funds, and um, WashDOT will assign the funds based on the application materials and the project type. So, so WashDOT 
Um, so the consolidated grant is a, arguably our most accessible grant program because it, it off, not, not only you know, does it afford the widest range of project types, but it's also the organizations that are eligible to apply. It's very inclusive. So that includes nonprofits, um, tribes, uh, of course, public transit agencies, and then, and then additional local agencies like city, county government are also eligible. So it's, you know, very, very, uh, very inclusive grant program. Um, these are our project types that are eligible. So you, once again, you can see kind of the full cross section um, operating projects. So, you know, paying to deliver a demand response service trip, you know, paying for um, fuel, um, labor, those kind of things. Uh, capital projects. So if your fleet is aging, you can, um, you know, if you want to update your fleet to go more electric, um, we have, um, we also work capital funding. Um, this cycle, you can, um, capital construction is also eligible. So up to um, $2.5 million for a construction project. We also fund mobility management activities and, and planning as well. And these are just all examples of different things we might fund through these projects. So these are our, um, the um, valuation criteria that the um, external planners will be using. Um, Gene will, will discuss the, the criteria that PSRC will be using for the local the local review, but you can just see, um, you know, establishes reserves or improves public transportation services within a committee, within a committee, um, it's responding to a need, you know, the, the feasibility, the tech, is it technically feasible? Um, is it leveraging other systems and modes? So these are some, it's kind of to give you a sense of what our, um, that panel is looking at, um, kind of going on, you know, it needs to comply to state, um, some of the state um, regs as well. Um, so yeah, so those are just keep in mind, those are what our um, third party panel is using to rank those projects on. Um, and then, yeah, so the grants management system, all of the applicants, so um, you might, um, Heard it referred to as GMS for short, but it's our um, grants database. Um, the, the preliminary application goes into it. Um, if you're awarded a grant through us, you would manage your grant through G through the grants management system for invoicing and, and status reports. All things are operating through the grants management system now. So if you don't have a grants management system account, um, you would need to um, create one in order to in order to apply. So if you need help. Um, setting up a, a GMS account. Um, all my contact information will be provided at the end of this um, at the end, on my final slide. So please reach out to me for technical assistance there. Um, and then the great resource are, um, is on the WashDOT public transportation um, apply for your grant webpage. So there's all kinds of um, grant materials that are currently um, posted there, including um, two that I want to share specifically. There are um, written application materials by um, project type. So there's, um, you, under the application materials headline, there's mobility management specific application uh, materials operating for an operating project or a capital project. So be sure to select the applicable project type. And then so kind of looking at an example of that, um, here are the op operating project application instructions there. And you can see it's about, oh, about 20, let's see, 33 pages in total. So it's very, very descriptive in what we're looking for. And then another um, another resource also on the WashDOT Manager Grant page is this consolidated grant um, resource sheet. And that kind of, that goes over the schedule. It goes over some, for you seasoned applicants, it goes over any of the, um, you know, key changes, um, you know, pretty much the most, you can, you know, read this, um, in full yourself, but some of the most significant changes I would note here, um, the cap for planning projects was removed, used to be 50,000, that has been removed fully. Um, if you're, um, there's um, some environmental justice questions if, you're, if your project exceeds $15 million, um, things like that. So yeah, these are both um, excellent resources, um, both um, kind of a technical assistance to complete the application and then um, very detailed instructions by project type. And then this one final thing to note is uh, these are state and federal state and federal funds. So there are certain compliance expectations associated with those funds. So um, we also maintain the consolidated grant guidebook. And if you're interested in looking at what those requirements might look like further, that's that that's a good resource to start with. And then yeah, thank you everyone. Um, thank you, Gene, for having me and and um 
happy to um, answer any questions at the end. And then if you have um, you know additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me um, either by telephone or um, or over email. And with that, let me hand it back over to to Jean. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I'll share my screen for the PSRC portion of today's webinar. So um, again, my name is Jean Kim. Um, Erin and I will provide the PSRC region's priority ranking process materials. Um, and for those of you who are new to this process, Puget Sound Regional Council or PSRC is uh, the Metropolitan Planning Organizations or MPO for counties, cities, and towns in central Puget Sound. Um, and all projects applying for the consolidated grant from King, Pierce, and Snohomish counties have to participate in our regional uh, process to be eligible for the state evaluation. And um, today, Erin um, and I will provide an overview of um, the PSRC's role in this grant program. Um, we will also walk you through the process of our region conducts for the recommendation. And Erin will share uh, the detailed information related to the factors we use for the staff assessment. And just as a reminder, please type your questions um, into the Q&A section. Um, we will address them after our presentation. So as Matthew shared, um, the state manages and allocates the consolidated grant funds, uh, which include both federal and state funds. Uh, the state uses a consolidated process to fund the transportation projects, especially the specialized transportation projects in our region, um, and assigns state funds, federal funds for both um, eligible projects. Uh, we PSRC provide rankings of the regionally prioritized projects through our process called the Regional Priority Ranking Process for the state's consideration. And when we say PSRC region for this particular grant program, um, that includes King, Pierce, and Snohomish counties. Um, although we PSRC work with partners in Kitsap County, um, Kitsap participates in this process through the Peninsula Regional Transportation Planning Organization, which is a different version of um, us in Peninsula region. And PSRC recommends uh, the priority projects from um, those three counties that I mentioned for the state's evaluation uh, by assigning the letter rankings to those projects. For the 2025 and 2027 biennium, PSRC can allocate a total of 11, 11 ABC rankings and an unlimited number of D rankings. What this really means is um, A ranking projects typically receive higher scores uh, from the state, C projects receive lower scores than A or B projects, and D ranking projects receive no additional uh, regional scores added to the statewide score, but this makes the project eligible to compete in the statewide consolidated grant program. Um, our region typically receives more applications than available ABC rankings that we can distribute. Uh, so some projects may end up receiving a D ranking. Um, there is no guarantee that higher ranked projects are fully funded by WashDOT, uh, but we ask all sponsors to write a strong um, application to receive higher rankings from the region and therefore uh, receive higher scores from the state. Also projects can apply for either two year or four year of funding um, if they are existing programs. And the projects that received four year of funding uh, will receive the same letter ranking from us for both biennia. Uh, we had about we had about 10 projects um, that received four years of funding, so two biennia um, in the last cycle. Um, and the list is posted on our website. Um, and we, we typically receive um, between 15 to 20 applications per biennium. And um, the state holds this consolidated grant process every two years. Um, I will walk you through this process chart. Um, this chart represents the streamlined process of the region's priority ranking process. So the light green colored boxes um, show wash dots process and the teal colored um, boxes are the PSRC regions process that 
um, I'll um, explain more um, in the next slide. But the overall flow um, is that WashDOT uses the system called the GMS that Matthew shared in his presentation to receive um, and collect applications by September 17th. And PSRC um, has its own process to assess and identify the prioritized projects using our own evaluation factors and then share the recommended uh, projects rankings with the state for their evaluation. And once state completes its evaluation using um, their own evaluation criteria, uh, the state will come up with a total score, adding the original score attached to the letter rankings um, and will finalize the results. So awarded projects can start uh, their implementation um, in July of next year, 2025. And again, this is all um, posted on the website with other resources. You can download um, this at the link uh, on the slide uh, and uh, you can access these resources from the PSRC Specialized Transportation Funding webpage. And we'll share that link after presentation. Um, and to further emphasize the important dates, um, applications are due September 17th of this year. All projects need to submit their applications to WashDOT um, through the GMS system and then send the exactly same application to PSRC by sending an email to me, um, jkim at psrc.org uh, by the same date and time. Um, to really ensure that they can participate in this year's uh, PSRC regional priority ranking process. Um, and for this, applicants have to export their applications to PDF from the GMS online system. And I will show how to do that in the next slide. Uh, we really encourage all the participants um, to consider finalizing their application and really start their application early on. Um, to avoid any last minute issues. And if they need any technical support from either state or um, PSRC, we ne they need to reach out to us early enough that we can provide any assistance. So this is the screenshot of the GMS system. So once you're done with the application, you will see this um, screen. And um, to export your application, you will hit preview application. And then that will give you, um, that will allow you to print the application um, to PDF. So that way you can export your application to PDF and attach that PDF version of your application when you send an email to PSRC staff. And after you submit your applications, we ask all project sponsors to provide a short presentation to PSRC staff and the committee on October 16th. Um, this session is scheduled for about a month later than the application due. Um, the exact time and the order of presentations will be determined after we receive all applications by the September deadline but we ask all Spencer, uh, sponsors to block out their calendars from at least 9.30 in the morning to afternoon to avoid any possible conflicts. Um, and the purpose of this presentation is to hear more information and more stories from the sponsors that might not be in the applications um, and maybe not captured in the applications and also to ask any questions we may have for the staff assessment and the committee review. Um, at this meeting, um, the committee members will also be present to learn uh, more about the projects before their deliberation meeting. And I also want to note that the quality of the presentation will not be evaluated, and this meeting will be on Zoom. So PSRC will reach out to project context for more information once we receive all applications by September, 7, September 17th. And November 20th is the date that the PSRC Advisory Committee recommends rankings for projects. Um, this meeting will start at 9.30 in the morning as well. And we also ask all attendees to hold their calendars for this important date. 
This is mainly where um, the committee members discuss the rankings. Um, and we also advise all um, project sponsors to attend this meeting to provide any information that the committee might ask at their deliberation meeting in November. And after the committee recommends the list of projects uh, with the letter ranking associated with the projects, the PSRC's executive board will make a final decision on rankings. And then PSRC will share the ranking list with the state for their scoring process. Um, PSRC will continue to coordinate with the state throughout this process. And here is a more detailed um, timeline of the import of the process that PSRC conducts. Again, September 17th is the deadline for applications. All applicants in our region need to submit the same applications to both WashDOT via GMS and PSRC by sending an email and attach the PDF version of their applications. October 16th, <clears throat> sponsor presentation. And November 20th, deliberation meetings are both important and often very long meetings. Um, it often takes at least a half day to have all the presentations and also conduct the deliberation meeting on, in November. Um, so we strongly encourage everyone to hold their calendars right now. Um, PSRC will not send uh, the meeting invite, but we will send um, several reminders and more information along the way. Um, but please uh, be remindful that we will not send a calendar invite. Uh, so please hold your calendars as soon as possible. And um, I will go over the factors we use for our staff level assessment of applications. These factors are called the regional priority ranking factors, and they allow PSRC to really identify how projects address the regional priorities for uh, the transportation programs that support um, older adults, people with disabilities, and others with accessibility and mobility needs. Um, this evaluation helps guide the advisory committee in developing its recommendations for the priority rankings for projects seeking the consolidated grant funds. Uh, most of the factors are derived from the plan called the Coordinated Mobility Plan, this is the region's coordinated human services transportation plan, um, which was adopted two years ago. And here is the link to the plan and everything again is uh, included in our uh, presentation materials, which we will post after today. Um, this is again, uh, the staff level review to provide an initial sorting before um, our advisory committee recommendation meeting happens in November. These factors are designed um, to rank projects based on how well they support the coordinated mobility plans, highest priorities um, included in the plan, and other factors determined by the advisory committee. PSRC's application guidance provides um, the crosswalk on uh, where each factor should be addressed in online application um, that WASHDOT provides through GMS. And the projects will receive a simple yes or no response for each factor based on their applications and presentations. So presentations are also part of the step level assessment. Um, a yes answer um, indicates that the project addresses the factor adequately and no response indicates that um, a project does not adequately address the factor. So um, each project rece will receive a simple yes or no instead of um, the score numeric score. Um, and then staff will summarize the review result um, and share it with our advisory committee as a consideration for their deliberation. So we worked with the committee and the equity advisory committee to finalize these five factors for um, the upcoming biennium. And Erin will provide more details about these factors in the next set of slides. Erin, are you ready to take it over? Thank you, Jean. Uh, yeah, perfect. Um, so I'm going to go into some additional detail. And um, as a reminder, if you have questions, please uh, put them in the Q&A and we can explain these factors further there. 
Um, so the first factor, as she mentioned, is the preservation of existing programs. So the intent here is to really support existing programs that um, customers already rely upon before investing in new or expansion projects. So um, to receive a yes in this category, um, a, a project must um, be an existing program. Um, and also, we wanted to let you know if you're curious about what makes something um, a new project or an expansion project, that's a project that either has not begun or has substantial changes in the cost and scope of work to um, an existing or, or original project. Um, so uh, I think this one is, is the most straightforward. Um, next slide, please. The next factor is uh, support for the region's coordinated mobility plan. And um, so projects that address one or more of the strategies in the coordinated mobility plan, which is linked here on the slide, uh, will receive a yes in this category. Um, and as a reminder, to receive a yes, it needs to address a, a strategy that is prioritized as a high priority. It's great if you're um, also addressing other strategies um, throughout your project and, in the, and demonstrate that in the application, but it will not earn a yes unless you demonstrate how it supports a highly prioritized strategy. Also, as a reminder, these strategies were developed for the current Coordinated Mobility Plan, um, which was adopted in 2022, based on public engagement, and then developed further with the Special Needs Transportation Committee. And we will, we will be doing a similar process next year um, to develop uh, a new set of prioritized strategies. So if as you're reviewing these, you're thinking, I don't agree with these priorities or you have additional input, that will be a chance to do that. But for this funding process, we will be working with the currently adopted coordinated mobility plan, um, which is linked here, and um, those strategies that are prioritized as high in that plan. Next slide, please, Jean. Thank you. Um, so as an example, um, we've provided the link in the previous uh, slide and elsewhere in the presentation so you can view our coordinated mobility plan. This is a screenshot from the plan. And if you're wondering what we mean by a highly prioritized strategy, um, Jean has just put up the, the purple arrow there to show you where to look. Um, and you'll see, as we mentioned, some are prioritized as other and some are prioritized as high. So again, to receive a yes, um, you need to demonstrate you're supporting um, a highly prioritized strategy. Next slide, please. The next regional priority ranking factor is service coordination. Um, for folks that have applied before, this was previously called a uniqueness of service. We've adjusted the title a bit um, to sort of more accurately capture um, the intent of this factor. So projects uh, that receive a yes here need to adequately explain how their service or program is coordinated with others. Um, this could be other specialized transportation program, but also should address um, any overlap in service with uh, public transportation. So that could be traditional fixed route or uh, microtransit travel training or other programs provided by public transit agencies. And again, the goal here is to avoid unnecessary duplication. So we acknowledge there are some cases where a service boundary may overlap with another service and that's okay. Um, but what we're really looking for here is for you to demonstrate that this service is um, unique or different or somehow offer something that the other service does not. Um, so that could mean catering to a different customer base, operating during different hours, having different vehicle types that can accommodate, for example, wheelchairs. Um, those sorts of things are, are what we're looking for here. And as a reminder, if you simply just put in one sentence that says we are coordinated with other transportation services that will not earn a yes here. Um, you really need to explain the coordination um, with a, a bit more detail than that. And again, maybe call out if there are specific programs where there's overlap and demonstrate that it's that while there's overlap, it's not an unnecessary duplication. Next slide. The next regional priority ranking factor is performance measures and targets. 
Um, this was something that we had previously been collecting before the pandemic and was sort of put on hold during our last cycle, um, acknowledging that a lot of programs um, weren't maybe hitting what they would have previously set as targets um, in this in their um, service. And so to evaluate um, for this measure, we're looking for a project um, to demonstrate that they will track required uh, performance measures, including at least one equity focused measure. Um, and that was based on feedback we got from the equity advisory committee, as well as um, comments from the last process that we should be looking to better integrate equity into this priority ranking process. Um, so again, uh, we're asking folks to establish those measures as well as set the targets for those measures to receive a yes. Um, and then the last piece being committing to measuring that data um, over time or how well you're, you're reaching those targets. Um, and uh, this one, there, as you, we kind of outlined there, there are several components to this factor. And so an application must address um, both the required performance measures and one equity performance measure, as well as setting targets for those measures. Um, if it doesn't complete all of those pieces, it will receive a no. We also wanted to remind folks that um, you don't necessarily need to report out on um, the performance measures with current data in this application. Um, this is really a more of a forward-looking factor. So um, you should certainly uh, try to set measures and select measures that um, you, you can collect data on in the future, uh, but we're really looking for you to select the measures, set the targets and commit to tracking versus um, expecting you to provide that data um, for your current system or your current uh, program in the application. Um, additionally, moving forward, whenever um, a new project is applying, they obviously won't have any of this data yet, uh, but should be thinking strategically about what measures um, they wanna have in place that uh, are feasible for collecting data. Next slide, please. Um, so we mentioned that there is that one of your performance measures should have an equity focus, um, and we wanted to provide some additional guidance by what we mean by equity. Um, for Puget Sound Regional Council, we have what we call equity focus areas that are developed based on where equity focused populations live and the overlap of those um, populations. And uh, they're listed here on this slide. They include people of color, people with low incomes, older adults, which we define as 65 and older, youth, people with disabilities, and people with limited English proficiency. Additionally, um, any tribes with, um, within the jurisdictional boundaries of PSRC are considered equity-focused populations, whether they're a member of PSRC or not. Um, and the origin of these equity focus areas and how we've come up with this particular definition is our regional equity strategy that was adopted as part of Vision 2050. So we use this definition consistently across our regional work to ensure that we're being consistent in our processes. Um, so that's kind of how we landed on this as the defined equity focus populations. Um, and we try to not really um, tinker with it too much um, as, as we implement it, just again, to be sure that we're being consistent across all of our work. Next slide, please. Um, so acknowledging that this is new for um, some folks, uh, even if you've been through this process before, we wanted to give some examples of equity focused uh, performance measures and um, Again, these are not necessarily required. These three listed here, they're just some examples. So you have the opportunity to set your own equity performance measure. Um, one example could be ridership by equity populations. Again, um, we've listed out uh, how what PSRC considers those equity focused populations in the previous slide. So collecting some demographic data from your riders to be able to demonstrate that maybe you're providing rides primarily to those equity focused populations could be one way of setting an equity focus uh, performance measure. 
Another example could be the volunteer hours dedicated to serving equity populations, um, especially if this if you're doing a volunteer driver program or um, even a travel training program could potentially use this measure um, to really evaluate how well you're reaching um, those equity focused populations. A uh, third example could be the number of training opportunities provided to people or organizations representing those equity populations. So say um, there's an organization dedicated to providing senior services in your area um, to go and provide travel training there um, would, would meet that goal or would count toward this uh, goal um, if those folks are 65 and older per the definition in the last slide. So um, again, these are just a couple examples. You don't have to use these measures, um, but we wanted to make it a little more concrete as this is um, new. Additionally, in our application guidance document, um, which is linked earlier in this slide deck, as well as in the summary slide at the end, um, there's a bit more explanation and examples. Uh, next slide. And the last uh, regional priority ranking factor is equitable engagement and communications. And um, this one was really favored when we talked to the Equity Advisory Committee about how to integrate equity in this process. Um, this was kind of their uh, favorite choice, um, as well as it's consistent with um, sort of our overall equity strategy um, that we mentioned earlier. So the purpose of this factor is to assess whether a project engages equity-focused populations when developing and maintaining programs. So to receive a yes, um, the application needs to adequately explain how the project was shaped by input from equity-focused populations and commits to continuously making improvements to the project based on feedback. So it's not just a one-time engagement, but we're really encouraging programs to do uh, continual engagement and uh, being responsive to the feedback they hear, from, especially from equity priority populations. So if a project doesn't provide an explanation or simply just leaves one statement that says, we engage with equity populations, that will receive a no. Um, so we're looking for specific information on both how you engage with equity focused populations, as well as how you're integrating that feedback. Um, I think that's it for this slide. So um, we wanted to, again, give some examples, acknowledging this is um, new uh, this in this cycle. So uh, projects should address inclu inclusive engagement strategies that are found in our equitable engagement guidance, which is linked here on this slide. So um, PSRC has sort of been learning over time and figuring out what seems to work well or not work well in the region um, and developed this engagement guidance document. Um, and as a reminder, there is um, a dedicated space in the application um, for you to provide this information. And some examples include um, compensating community members, addressing language barriers, and partnering with community-based organizations. We also wanted to acknowledge that um, some of these strategies do have a cost associated with them, such as compensating a community member or maybe to address language barriers, you're translating materials. Um, we know that a lot of programs have very tight budgets and understand that there are strategies that are uh, maybe what you would call a lower cost strategy. Um, so again, we doing doing what you can with the resources you have to engage with equity populations is what we're really looking for here. Um, and also uh, similar to um, the examples we provided for the equity focused performance measure, these are just some examples. Um, you can look through our equitable engagement guidance as well as our application guidance for more examples and information, and we're happy to answer any questions on these. Um, and now I will turn it back to Jean to go into a bit more detail on the resources we've pulled together, um, which would again include how you can address all these factors in your application. Thank you, Erin. Yeah, um, so here is the link to uh, where we posted all the schedule and the materials related to 
uh, for our regional priority ranking process. Um, you will see the schedule and the factors guidance. Um, so the summary guidance of all that Erin um, presented uh, right now. And then we also provide the population density maps, uh, the countywide maps for those who um, need uh, the maps for their application. And lastly, we also posted uh, the last results of the original priority ranking process for those who are uh, who have questions or are curious about which projects receive two year versus four years um, of funds. And um, in the past, we provided some um, assistance to create map or customized maps. But um, because of uh, the staff capacity, we ask all uh, sponsors to submit data request form on the PSRC website um, well before the deadline, September deadline for any um, assistance in data or mapping. Um, that way, uh, the PSRC data team can um, help you or seek um, the ways to help you to create those materials for you before the September deadline. And here is um, a short video of where to find those materials. So um, after you go, go on the PSRC Specialized Transportation webpage, you will have to scroll down and click on the 2025 to 2027 materials and resources bar. And that will give you the drop down menu to um, view all these materials that I just mentioned. And again, here is the contact information and link to the resources that we posted um, on the website, um, as well as the WASHDOT Community Transportation Planners um, contact information for um, your respective counties, um, and a link to the WASHDOT webpage for more information about their guidance. Um, to further emphasize the important dates, Application deadline is September 17 by 3 p.m. Um, all applicants need to submit their applications to WashDOT through the GMS system and PSRC by exporting their applications. Sponsor presentation is on October 16. Um, sponsors uh, will provide a short presentation, probably um, about less than 10 minutes, and they will have an opportunity to share more information outside of the applications with the staff and um, the Special Needs Transportation Committee voting members and alternates. Um, lastly, November 20th is the deliberation meeting for the upcoming consolidated grant cycle for our region. Um, all the committee members um, have to attend for recommendations and we highly encourage the project sponsors to be present uh, for any possible questions from the committee. So please mark your calendar right now uh, but we will also provide um, several reminders throughout the course of this process. So that was um, the end of the presentation today. And I think I saw two questions um, in the Q&A box. So uh, the first question for those who don't have access to um, the Q&A section, section is, uh, from Thomas, um, how often are projects ranked as a D by PSRC awarded funding by WashDOT via the composite score? If applicable, um, have awards typically been in full or have D projects ever received partial funding? Um, and Matthew answered that during the last cycle, PSRC ranked one project as a D. This was a planning project um, and was fully funded. So thank you, Matthew, uh, to answer. The questions, do you have anything else to add there or? Uh, no, nothing further for me, thank, thank you. All right, thanks, Matthew. And um, the second one is from the anonymous attendee. After the application is submitted, we have, do we have to email a PDF copy to alert the PSRC? Is that correct? And Erin answered, yes, um, that is correct. Please email to jkimjkim at psrc.org by the same time and um, deadline as washed out. So that will be September 17th by 3 p.m. So yes, that's correct. And um, our presentation materials include how to do that, how to export your application in PDF from G the GMS system.
And I don't see any other questions in the Q&A box. Um, but if you have any questions, now is the time. Um, but uh, Matthew, Aaron, and I will be um, able to answer any other questions after this webinar. Um, we can assist you via phone or email too. So please let us know. I will give it another minute. And again, um, all the presentation materials and video recording of today's training will be posted on our website, um, probably sometime next week. Um, and please uh, don't forget to submit the applications to both WASHDOT and PSRC uh, by the same deadline and the time indicated in our presentation materials. Going once, going twice. Okay, um, I don't see any other questions. So I guess we can adjourn 50 minutes early. And I would like to thank you, Matthew and Aaron, joining today's um, training and hope all have a great summer. And please reach out to us with any further questions. Thank you. We'll adjourn. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.